In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use Apple Keynote to make complex animations with zero coding. So I teach high school physics and make video lectures for my classes. And I include a lot of animations in the video lectures, but I also know very little coding, like not really enough to make really good animations. And honestly, there are probably better systems for animations that involve just a little bit of code, but I've gotten pretty used to the Keynote system, so I wanted to show you how you can use it without having any coding knowledge whatsoever to make some pretty decent animations that you can use in your videos. So these are just a few examples of animations that I've been happy with from my last few videos. So over the next few videos in this series, I'm gonna run you through and show you how I made each one of these animations. So this first one you can see is a position time graph of a moving person, so the graph exactly matches their motion. In the second animation, I'm trying to show a pretty complex relationship between acceleration and velocity on a graph of an object with a changing acceleration due to air resistance. So again, no coding required for this at all. So this is obviously not as fancy as a lot of animations that you can make, but it's still a lot compared to what a lot of other programs without programming offer. And one more. Add a little more detail here. And one last one here, just connecting vectors. So in this video, I'm going to start with this animation here. I'll explain the basic animation tools and how you can use them to create a pretty complicated video. So I'm going to also assume that you know how to put in like basic shapes and things like that into your slides. So I'm basically assuming that you can make all of this from scratch. If you need to know how to do that, a lot of shapes are up here in this option. So if you click on this and click on a line, you can drag this around. If you go to format, you can give it different sizes and stuff. But again, I'm assuming you know how to do that and you want to learn more about the animation side of it. So I'm just going to assume you have this built. So to begin to animate, you're going to go up here to the animate tab. So when you click on the animate tab, this is showing you the animations for the overall slide, like the transition from one slide to the next slide. And we don't really care about those animations. We want the animations for specific parts of the slide. And there are two ways we can access the animations that we've already made. We can either click on one of the objects that's animated and it shows us what that object does. So for the build in, how the object appears in the slide is gonna be a drop. Action, I can, you can see I've added multiple actions to this person and build out if you want them to disappear in some way, but there's no build out. So basically every single object on your slide has the option of build in, action, and build out. So I'm gonna give you an example of that in a moment, but first I'm just gonna show you one more thing. If you go down to build order, this is the list of all the animations on this slide. So you can see that there are quite a few can look a little intimidating at first, but I think once you get the system down, it actually becomes pretty simple. So I'm gonna delete all of the animations that already exist and show you how to start from scratch. Okay, so if you want to animate any object on your slide, you're just gonna click on that object. And again, you have three options, build in, action, and build out. So this is how the object enters the slide, this is what it does on the slide once it's there, and this is how it leaves the slide. So the first thing I want to happen on my position versus time graph slide is for this person to appear. So if I go to build in and click add an effect, you can see that there are all these different ways that the object can appear on the screen. So I'm just going to go through a few and give you a few examples and then select the one I want. We can select as an example, let's say anvil, and it gives you a quick preview of that. If you want to see that happen again, you can go up here and press preview and you can repeat what it looks like as many times as you want. You can change the duration of how long the build-in happens for. So if I change it to like 15 seconds, that didn't do anything. So I'm gonna ignore that um, and try something different. 
So scale big will have a better example of that. So if I click on scale big, that means it's scaling from a big size. And if I increase the duration, you can see that it takes a very long time for it to scale in, 7.75 seconds. So learning these is really just kind of playing around with them, looking at what exists, fade and scale. So you can just press that, see what that looks like. It's all about finding the option that works best for you in your specific situation, lens flare. An animation that I really like is the drop animation because it kind of makes the objects feel a little more real. Like they're not just popping into the screen as drawings, but they're like movable objects specifically that are going to have some effect on what's around them. So if I ever decide that I'm not happy with that animation, I can just click change and it'll go to something different. So next thing that I want, I'm trying to show that this person's starting position is the Y intercept of the graph. So after this person appears, I want to highlight that this Y intercept down here is the same as the position right here. So I'm going to take this and choose scale big. And I'm going to make this one scale big as well. Now, because I want to draw attention to the fact that these two represent the same thing, I also want them to appear at the same time. So, so far you know how to add an animation, but now I need to show you how to make them appear at the same time or at different times. So if you go to build order, this is where you have control over what build happens when. So you can see I have all three of the builds that I've added so far. I have the drop and I can press preview just in case I've forgotten what that is. Scale big for the circle and scale big for the other circle. So this is where I can control the order that they happen on my slide. So right now the person is going to drop in and then the circle will appear and then the other circle will appear. And I have all of these set to occur on click. So every time I click my mouse, the next event will happen. But it doesn't have to be that way. If you click on this option, you actually have three different ways this can happen. With build two, we'll cause it to happen at the same time as build number two. And after build two, we'll have it follow immediately after build number two without you having to click. So just to observe the difference there, right now this one's happening after this one. That's what this line means right here. So if I press preview, I can see that this happens immediately after without me having to click. And if I choose with and I preview that, they now both happen at the same time. And just if I click on click again, just one more time, and I press play on my slide, you can see that they're following the order that they appear on that build order. So I want these to occur at the same time, so I'm going to click with. And now we're going to get the person moving. So my goal is to show how the position time graph will look as this person moves across the number line. So I would like this line to appear as this person is moving. And I can see that this person is going to be moving from a position of zero to a position of seven in two seconds. So I'm going to start by making the person move. So I don't want them to build in again. They've already appeared in my slide. I now want to add an action. So as you can see, there are a bunch of options for actions as well. I want them to move from one place to another, so I'm going to select move. And now you can see I have this like invisible person that I can move around. So this is where the person is going to end up at the end of their move specifically. And there are a ton of options with how you can make this thing move. Like just as an example, this can be a straight line, but if you would like it to not be a straight line, if you move your mouse to the middle of the line, this little dot will appear and you can drag this down and make their move a curve instead. And if you double click on the dot, it becomes a square and now it's an angled path like that. So if you press delete or backspace on that little dot, it'll go away and it just becomes a straight line again. So I want this person to move from zero to seven. So I'm gonna drag that right over the seven in two seconds. If I look down at my controls, I can see two things that I can change. I can see the duration and I can see the acceleration. So the duration is how long the animation takes to complete. So right now it's at one second, but I want this to take two seconds. So I'm just going to change this 
to two seconds. And now when I do that and press preview, you can see that it takes two seconds to get from one side to the other side. Now this is a physics class and I'm really concerned with how the object is accelerating and here it is not supposed to be accelerating because it's a constant velocity because it's a straight line. So these are the options for the acceleration. Ease in and out means that it's gonna get faster as it goes in and then slower as it comes out. Ease in will just make it go faster and faster and faster. Ease out makes it start fast and then slow down. And ease in and out does both. But I don't want any of those. I just want it to be a constant velocity. So I'm going to select none. So that's what I want it to look like. I want it to take two seconds to get from zero to seven. Now I want that part of the graph to match up. I want this to be drawn as it's going from zero to seven. There are a few shapes that have special actions just for them, specifically lines. If you go to build in for lines, lines have a special action called line draw, which only appears for them. So this looks like this, the lines just being drawn along the screen. And you can see I have a few more controls here. I can control whether the line starts from the start, which is kind of arbitrary. Here it's just saying it starts over here, ends over here. I can select end to start, and in that case the line will be drawn in the other direction. Or I can choose middle to end, which will look like this. So I want it to go up the graph from here to here, so I'm going to select start to end. I also want it to take two seconds. And I don't want this to accelerate either, like easing in will cause it to get faster as it's drawn this way. Easing out will cause it to get slower as it goes. But I don't want either of those things, so I'm just going to select none. I can see when I preview this that the person is already on the other side of the number line by the time this appears. And I don't want that to happen. I want this to happen with the person moving. I want these two things to occur at the same time. So if you're ever concerned about the time when builds happen, you're going to go to build order and find the two builds. So I can see the move of the person is right here and the line draw is right here. So I want them to happen together. So I'm going to click with build four. And when I press preview, they're now happening together at the same time. So far I have the person drop in and then I don't want that to happen at the same time as anything else. And then if I click, these two circles are going to scale in big together. And then when I click again, this person is going to move and the line is going to be drawn on the graph at the same time. Because this is a position time graph, I also want to show the time passing in those first two seconds. So I'm going to go over here and I want to make this rotate down here to the first two seconds in two seconds. So I'm going to go to action and this time I'm going to choose rotate. So the issue with rotating, as you can see here, is that if you rotate an object, it just rotates in place. So in order to make it rotate and move somewhere else, if you take that transparent object and drag it to where you would like it to be at the end of the rotation, it's going to add a second ac action. So now there's move and rotate on the same object. So if you look in the build order, two actions have now been added, the rotate and move, because they're kind of separate. Like the move is going down here, the rotate is just rotating it. So I'm going to control one at a time and see what happens. So obviously I want it to rotate clockwise, that's good. And because I'm going from zero seconds to two seconds, that's going to be a 60 degree angle. So I'm going to change this to 60 degrees. So now this is much more lined up with my two second mark. So I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to press play and observe how that looks. So that's not quite what I want it to look like. It's kind of like veering down here. So I'm going to give it a curve as it's moving like this. So that's helping a little, but it's still not quite where I want it. So another thing is that I don't want this to accelerate at all. I want this to kind of tick down at the same rate as it goes around the clock. So I'm going to choose no acceleration. And if I go down to move, I also want to choose no acceleration. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better. If I lined it up just a little bit more, it might make it look more natural.
Okay, so the last thing is that I want both of these things to take two seconds rather than one second because this is supposed to be a two second part of the graph. So I'm gonna go up here and select two seconds and go to move and select two seconds. So if I do that for both and press preview, this is what it looks like. I'm just gonna adjust this up a little. I want the base of this line to be at the same place as the base of the other line. If they're basically on that same pivot, it's gonna look a lot more natural. So this is about as good as I can get it for now. And right now, these are happening after the person moves and the line is drawn, and I want them to happen with the person moving and the line being drawn. So I'm gonna click with build for. And so now you can see when I hit preview that all three things happen at once. Those two seconds tick down, the line's drawn, and the person is moving. So now that I've done that, I definitely want these objects to move more than they have because this person is gonna have to move back one, stop, and then move forward like this. And the time is gonna have to be passing while that happens, and the graph is gonna have to be drawn. So I'm going to click on this person, and because I want to add additional actions to them, I'm eventually going to hit Add Action. But before I do that, I need to be very careful, because if I just select Add Action, the program might think I want to add a new action between when they get to 0 and when they get to 7. And I want to specify that this is something that's happening after. So if you click on this red dot down here, that's going to show you the path that they're taking. So I'm specifically going to select this part of the path, this square right here representing the end of the path. Because if I hit add action there, that's going to tell the program that I want to add an action after this path specifically. So I'm going to select move. And so now there's the second action that I can control right here. So I can see their full path and I can control the second action right here. If I decide that I don't want this, I can just hit delete while I have it selected and it deletes the action. Okay, so I'm going to add action, click on move. And I want this person to move down from seven to one in just one second. So I'm gonna bring this person back, try to follow that same path as much as possible. And in just one second, so that time duration is correct, no acceleration, they're gonna move back this way. But I can see when I previewed that, that this is now happening at the same time as this line being drawn, which I don't want. So this kind of messed up my build order a little bit. So I'm going to go back here. And this is the second move of the person. And this is the first move. So I'm just going to say, I want this move to happen after the other stuff. So I'm going to bring it down here to the bottom. And I want this stuff, all of these moves, to happen at the same time as that first move. So I'm going to combine these with build for, like that. And now I'm going to add the rest of the things that happen when this person goes back to one. So first of all, this second part of the graph is drawn. So I'm going to go to build in, line draw. And I only want this to take one second because it's just one second of the graph and I don't want any acceleration. So now I'm going to go to build order and make this happen at the same time as the person moving. So with this person. And I can see that this is taking one second, so I'm gonna to have to add one second to the clock. So if I go over here and click on this red dot, this is gonna take me to the actions I already have. I'm now going to add an action over here. So I want it to rotate again, and this time it's only one second, so each second is 30 degrees around the circle, so I only want it to rotate by 30 degrees. And I don't want any acceleration, and I want the duration to be one second. So I'm just going to take this and drag it down here to the three second mark. Curve it just a little bit. So this is the move action, so I'm going to choose no acceleration. And for rotate, we've got no acceleration. So when I press play, that's what that looks like. I need to move this up just so that that pivot is at the same spot as the other lines. It looks just a little bit more natural. If you want to select multiple animations, you can just hold down shift and you can control both of these. So I want both of these to happen with the rotation of the clock. I want the movement and the new line draw to all happen with that one second of rotation. So I'm gonna hit with previous build like this. And when I do that, you can see that the person is moving down by negative six in one second and the clock is reading exactly one more second has passed. 
So now I've got a decision to make because I've got these split up right now. I've got this person moving forward and then backward. And this split right here means that I'm going to have to click on the presentation to make this part happen. And I'm not sure that I want to do that. So just pressing play and observing what it looks like so far. It stops right here and I have to click again to make it go backwards like this. And I don't really want to do that. I don't really want that to happen in this animation. Like there may be times in presentations when I want the person to pause so I can talk about their action. But in this presentation, I just want one continuous movement throughout the graph to show students how a graph of position time would look for this particular motion. So basically I want the person to start moving this way immediately when they stop moving this way. So I'm gonna go back here and say that this action is going to happen after the previous action. So instead of saying with the previous action, I'm gonna say after the previous action. So this line appears right here to tell you that all of these builds are happening together, but they're happening after these builds happen. So when I press preview, you can see how it looks. So that's just instantaneous. I don't have to click my mouse at all. If you ever wanted to delay an animation from starting, you can go down here and say, okay, I want this one to be delayed by one second from the previous animation. So if I do that and press preview, you can see that those animations were all delayed by one second because this one is happening with this one. So if this one is delayed by one second, all of these are gonna be delayed by one second. but I don't wanna actually do that here. So that's basically everything you need to know to build this animation. I'm just gonna finish up the animation with these last two sections just to show you how that would look. But those are basically all the controls that I was introducing for this first video. So when they get to one second, I can see that they're pausing for four seconds. So that actually means I'm not gonna add another move action just yet for this part of the person's motion because I just want them staying still. So instead, I'm just gonna say that this line is drawn in and there's no acceleration and it's happening for four seconds. So that's what I want it to look like. And I still want time to pass in this time. So I'm gonna click on this and four seconds is gonna be 30, 60, 90, 120 degrees of rotation. With no acceleration. And I wanna bring that down here to where it will be there. And so I'm gonna drag this out so that it's more of a circular path as it rotates. I'm just Just one other thing, if you ever wanna lock objects in place, if you, if you don't wanna accidentally move some of your objects, if you press lock, that's gonna make it not editable anymore. So I only wanna edit this line, not the circular clock. So I'm gonna drag this just so the pivot's in the same place. That can always be kind of a pain. Drag this down a little bit. That's probably gonna look a little bit more natural. And I want this to take four seconds altogether with no acceleration. I can see that when I inserted this rotate and move, they kind of split this up. So this is the previous rotate and move, and now these are happening with my previous animations, which I definitely don't want to happen. So I'm gonna shift, take these two down here, where they're out of the way of this previous animation, and then combine these again, so with build eight. So now this looks the way that I want it to, where previous animations are all happening together. And now I have this new animation after, where the line is being drawn, so that will happen after the previous builds and the clock is rotating. So four seconds, no acceleration, four seconds, no acceleration. I'm gonna combine this with the others. And when I press preview, all of this happens. Okay, in the last part of the graph, I can see that this person is gonna move from one to seven and it's gonna take them one, two, three, four, five seconds. 
So I'm going to click on my person, click over here, add action, move. And for this last part, they're going to be moving from one second to seven seconds. And I can see that that action got a little mixed up with my action down here. So I'm just going to have to change that in a second. So no acceleration, and it's going to take them five seconds to do that according to my graph. Yeah, this kind of got mixed up with all of this stuff. And I don't want that to happen. I want this to be kind of the final part of the animation. So I'm going to bring these two down here. This line draw somehow got dragged down here. So I'm just going to bring this back up. So we've got the person's move. I now want this line to draw in. I want it to take five seconds and no acceleration. And I want this to rotate by one, two, three, four, five more seconds. So because each notch is 30 degrees, that's going to be a rotation of 150 degrees with no acceleration. And it's going to take five seconds. So I'm going to drag it up here. There's kind of a nice guide here. I want it to stop in exactly the same place that it started. So these little notches on either side, those little yellow lines, help you match it up so that it's even. So I'm going to have that be a circular curved path with no acceleration. And the move is also going to take five seconds. Just need to make sure these are all ordered. So I've got that rotation, that move, move of the person, and the line drop. So now I'm just going to say that each one of these is happening after the previous one. So this is happening after build 11. And this is happening after build 14. So when I press play, this is what it looks like. So those are some of the tools that I use to make animations on Keynote. And again, it takes no coding experience at all. You just have to get used to the Keynote controls. So in future videos, I'll show you how to construct other animations that I've made.